Thank you for joining me today. Uh, in this video, we're going to discuss things known as possessives. Uh, simply put, possessives are just words in a sentence that are marked using what's called an apostrophe to show that a noun or a pronoun owns something or is in possession of something. Um, and it could be tangible, which means something you can hold, see, and feel, or it can be intangible, like an idea or a concept, like an emotion as an example. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the first slide uh, where I can break this down more thoroughly. Uh, first, we look at the word possess or possessive in general, and it means again to have or to hold or to own in many cases. Um, um, it also shows what belongs to a noun or a pronoun specifically in a sentence. Uh, examples of pronouns are like I, he, she, them, they. Uh, those are words used to substitute a proper noun in a sentence, uh, so it refers to a person. All right. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at how we would use possessives or how we would apply the possessive rule in a sentence. Uh, there is, uh, excuse me, there is a punctuation mark which you will need to use uh, in order to indicate that something is owned by a noun or a pronoun. Uh, in this case, it's going to be the apostrophe. Uh, the apostrophe will come right before adding an S to a noun or a pronoun, again, in a sentence to show that that noun or pronoun owns or has something belonging to it or associated very closely with it. Um, all right, so let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and take a look at a few examples. All right, let me make some room so that I've got enough space. All right, so the first example I would give you uh, without a possessive in it would be uh, the bike is owned by Brian. Now, to use a possessive, you simply need to look at the word in, excuse me, to, to find out how to use a possessive in this sentence, you really just need to look for the noun or the pronouns in the sentence to kind of figure out, uh, okay, well, what is the thing which owns the other thing in this case in the sentence? And so here I can see that we're referring to Brian and that's a proper noun, uh, it's a person, and we're also telling you explicitly that the bike is owned by Brian. And so simply put, Brian's the one who owns the bike. So my sentence would be, uh, that's Brian's bike. So I would add apostrophe S to Brian since he's the one who possesses the thing, which is the bike. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at a second example. Uh, blue is the color of the car. Okay, so the car in this case owns, in a way, the color, right? The color that it has. So you would say uh, the car's color is blue. So it would be apostrophe S to car since car is the noun that possesses the color blue. Let's go ahead and take a look at a third example. Uh, we have the fur of the cat, and fur refers to the hair on the cat. Uh, for this one, you would say the cat's fur. So cat is the thing which possesses the fur, the fur you're referring to. Uh, all right, the, another example would be, um, isn't that the car you bought? Now for this one, it doesn't follow the same rule as the other possessives I've shown you, where you would add apostrophe S to indicate that uh, a noun or pronoun owns something or possesses something. Uh, in this case, when it comes to your, you would actually not add an apostrophe at all. You would just be um, in this example where I had, isn't that the car you bought? Well, okay, you are the one who owns the car, so it would be your car in this case. It would simply be Y-O-U-R. And this version of your is kind of an exception to the rule of possessives. Uh, this version of your uh, is to show ownership or to show possession. Whereas if you had your as in Y-O-U apostrophe R-E, that would be the contracted version or excuse me, well, it would be a contracted version of you and R. And it would read you are car, uh, which is vastly different than your car, which is the car that you own. So it's very important to make that distinction. Um, they are homophones, they sound exactly the same, but they are quite different. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the fifth example, which is the house my parents own. Now in this example, we actually have a plural, because parents in this case is my plural. I have a mom and a dad in the example I'm using, and that's more than one person, and they own one thing, the house that I'm referring to. Now for this, it also is a bit of an exception to our rule. You would think, oh, I would just take parents, add apostrophe s, and it would be parents' house. This is not the case. Um, if we're dealing with plurals, and we're dealing with uh, more than one person or thing, and they own the same thing, then we would add the apostrophe after the s in the plural. 
with no need to add an additional S. So the sentence in the example I just gave, which is uh, the house my parents own, parents being plural, would be uh, my parents' house. And it would be parents with an apostrophe at the end of the S to indicate the house is owned by both parents. Okay, so just to reiterate, uh, the exceptions to the rule are, at least for you, would be, um, if you're showing possession for you, it will always be Y-O-U-R, never your, which is you, apostrophe R-E, that would be the contraction of U and R, very, very different. And if you're dealing with plurals, so you're dealing with more than one person or thing, and they possess or they own something, or something is very closely attributed to them, then you would add the apostrophe after the S of that plural. You would not add apostrophe S to the existing S. All right, uh, again, possessives are here to indicate that something is owned or closely related to a noun or a pronoun. Hopefully this was helpful, hopefully this clarified, and I encourage you also, if you haven't already, to please subscribe uh, so that you can continue to receive updates as far as content I'm producing uh, related to English language development. All right, thank you.